everybody, you're watching Cole the Corn Star. If you're even slightly interested in farming or just want to watch a 22 year old farmer get some stuff done, you're in the right place. <laughs> left from the homemade bread I made yesterday. Dalton loved it. He ate half loaf, I think. So I made another one to go with this pot of chili. It is a beautiful morning. I got that white semi full and then behind the red dump truck there I got the red semi and that's full. So we need to go check the oil on the Oliver tractor here. Make sure everything is running okay on that. Get that warmed up. Then we need to unload those two semis. Hopefully the frost will be burning off the ground here. So that way we can go. Ugh. It's my words. So that way we can go combine some beans. I heard Tiger Cat. Hey Tiger Cat, what you doing? Your bed looks a little slanty. You're the smart one. He's a good cat. He lays in the sun, he lays on a hay bale, hay is warm. Well, the hay itself isn't warm, but it makes a nice bed for him. This bin right here holds 32,000 bushels. We're gonna get this bad boy plum full with beans this year. In the past, we've put our beans in two different bins, but this year, we're just gonna try putting them all in one. Makes it easier for unloading. Now, oh, Dad hasn't spilled too many beans. Okay, let's check our oil. Highly customized dipstick. Just a dipstick with a nut welded to the end. Looks good. Hydraulic fluid looks a little low. Fun fact, I don't like getting my hands all oily and diesel fuel-y and stuff, so I usually wear gloves or I use a paper towel. Probably wouldn't hurt to put some diesel in it. Fire this old boy up, that way when we bring the semis around, we can just start unloading them right away. Watch this. It's very important that when you start a diesel engine, you let it warm up nicely before you start running or full throttle. Otherwise, you can do some serious engine damage. That's not what you want. I think Dad might be here already. I can hear a semi running. That hurts my imagination. Who knows? Wow, ah, Dad, looks like you're gonna have to repave the driveway. Way to destroy that. It's hard to find good help. Got one going. Morning, Dad. Hi, Cole. Cold out here. Just debating if I want to change the hoses around or reverse to that auger. Just seemed like yesterday it was kind of getting slow. We need diesel fuel. We never have what we need at the place that we need it, even though we have the item and we bought extra for that specific reason, but it never seems to leave the area that has the surplus. Frustrating. If you don't know what I'm talking about, we seem to go through antifreeze like it's out of style out of here. I, I honestly don't know where it all goes, but well, we have like six gallons down at the main heated shop and we have none over here at the main farm. So I go and buy a new case for over here and it ends up down at the main heated shop. And then we run out of that six gallons that we had before somehow. So it just kind of stays down there. And then when we need it here where the tractors are 90% of the time, we have no antifreeze. Here we go, boys and girls. Let's see if we can watch Dad get stuck in this mud hole. All right, let's watch. Not a problem. So what we do here is we take this hopper and it swings under and then we can unload the beans into this, goes up the auger, into the bin. Got the Oliver ready to go. Dad's unloading that white semi with beans and he's just gotta do the red one. I'm gonna fill up the tanks here on the dually with diesel fuel, that way I can bring these out to both combines, grain cart, whatever, just in case we need fuel, we got it. These tanks take about 15 minutes to fill. Lots of diesel in them. I'll see you guys at the combine. Got the typical morning procedure. We need to do some greasing. We need to check oils. We need to check fluids. We need to check the sickle on the front to make sure nothing's broken. We need to check guards. Just do an overall look around, make sure a chain's not hanging somewhere where it's not supposed to be, or flat tire, or something like that. It's an important inspection. Just typical maintenance stuff. With typical morning maintenance on the combine here, the first thing I do is I walk along the front of the bean head, and I'm checking each and every one of these sickles to make sure none of these teeth are bent or broken or missing. 
And then I'm also checking these guards to make sure they're not bent or broken as well. I pull open these guards here and I look under to make sure all these chains and stuff are on their pulleys where they're supposed to be. And then I have a grease circ under there that I hit. And then I shimmy up my ladder here. Now on top of the ladder we have the engine bay and I have three grease circs on there that I check. I check the engine oil and I check our antifreeze level. Every couple days I have four grease circs at the top of the auger that I top off with grease. And I look in the grain tank here to make sure nothing's held up where it's not supposed to be and nothing's bent or broken. If I was low on diesel fuel, I'd top it off with fuel. It's a good idea to pop your head up in here to check your sieves, make sure everything's running okay in there, make sure nothing's plugged up or broken. I have another grease circ on the side of this machine. I also check under these guards to make sure everything's on. I check under here to make sure there's not a hydraulic line that's blown. I've had that happen before. I opened my rock trap, which is this thing right here. I'm supposed to catch rocks if they go in the throat. I've had them get into the rotor though. And then there's a few other grease circs you're supposed to hit every 50 hours and then every 100 hours, every 500 hours. So I just hit those as they're needed and then we're ready to go. Presley and Dalton are fixing a couple sickles on the John Deere here. In the meantime, I'm gonna go check some beans, see if they're ready to roll. What I'm doing is I'm grabbing pods as I go and I'm squeezing them to see if they crack open. This one's not cracking open very easily. We'll try a couple more. The next thing I'm going to do is check the moisture of the beans. So I'm going to take this bean, I'm going to crack it in my teeth. This one didn't crack. I do about 10 of them and if less than half crack then we're not ready to roll yet. And if more than half crack then they're dry enough. This particular part of the field where I'm standing used to have about oh, 500 trees here or so. They all ended up in that pile. The lady who owns this farm decided she wanted these trees out so they're out and that section's a little bit rough. So you gotta be careful when you go through there with the combine because there's a lot of little roots and stuff that are sticking up. We couldn't get in there to work it up this past spring because it was too wet, so we just kinda had to plant through it. Gonna be a big old bonfire. I just walked through a couple areas here in this field and all the pods that I grabbed, none of them really wanted to crack open at all. I had to force them and then when I did the bite test, I didn't have any that were cracking in my teeth. We have a nice little breeze right now and it's supposed to get up to 50 degrees, so we'll give it another hour or so and then they should be running. Beans are really finicky when it comes to harvesting them because they pick up moisture during the night and if the combine doesn't separate them well, if they're wet, you spit a lot out the back. And you don't want to be doing that because when you're doing that, that means you're losing money. It's not all about the money for what we do. We like to feed people, but at the end of the day, we have to pay our bills too, so if we're kicking five bushel an acre out the back, take the current market price of soybeans times five bushels, it gets expensive pretty quick. Looks like the John Deere's having some issues, so we're gonna run to our John Deere supply store, John Deere store, whatever you wanna call it, and get a new part. The store makes me feel uncomfortable. This farm behind me hasn't been farmed for 25 years. It's been in the conservation reserve program. It got pulled out this last year. And so now we're farming it. We're looking for a place to cross on this waterway here. Down there, it's a big ditch and we're not gonna be able to cross. And we'd use the field drive on the other side of the road, but it's really narrow and it's right over the crest of a hill. So it's just not safe. I think I found a spot right here. So Cooper's gonna test it out. Looks good. With this farm not being farmed in 25 years, when we prepared this ground, it was a little rough. There was a lot of big ant hills, and there was a few trees here and there that we had to take care of. So when we combine this, we're gonna have to go a little bit slower just to be cautious, since it's a brand new field to all of us. We don't know the little quirks, ins and outs of the field. Yes, fields have their little ins and outs, quirks. You know rock patches, you know where it could be wet, things like that. So we're gonna be learning as we go along here. But then next year when we farm this, it should be a lot smoother going. Get out of here. Stuff like this is what you want to look for. It's a nice strand of barbed wire. Combine wouldn't like that too much. Tires wouldn't like that too much. We're gonna go for a ride in the John Deere. This header is 40 feet wide. The one on our combine is 30 feet. So this thing feels like a monster. One thing I will notice about this combine, the cab is huge and it's a lot quieter than ours. By the way guys, this is Presley. I know I talked about him in past clips, but he's basically my brother. He's virtually been at my house every day for like eight years straight. So 
know him pretty well. Just blows my mind how quiet it is in here. I can actually hear myself think. Looks like I don't need these. Just kidding, just kidding. A lot of you guys comment that I have my earplugs in and I have them sitting in my ear, but they're not in my ear, so I can still hear people. It's just when I need them, then I don't have to pull them out of my pocket. All I gotta do is just spin them in real quick. A few of you that watch Americans Most Wanted, we got Dalton coming up here in the tractor. You might have seen him on it a time or two or four or five times, but he's trying to change his life. So we're gonna work with him. See how he's trying to run me over? But he's a good kid. Look how serious he looks. Pretty careful guy. Cooper and Dalton got the one grain cart stuck right where they're standing behind the bean head here that you can't see. But we're full right now and we're gonna try to cross this. Yep, she got stuck. Got the tractor stuck here and the grain cart left some pretty deep ruts. Sounds like Cooper blew a hydraulic line on our combine, so he's gonna go get a new one so he can get that fixed. And in the meantime, I guess I'm green cart guy. Wouldn't wanna be walking through this waterway in the dark and accidentally fall in one of those holes. <laughs> it's definitely a little muddy over here, but not too bad. Nothing sticking to the wheels when we're going across the field. It's just down here in the bottom of this dip. It's just kind of naturally wet. Back behind me there where it's extra wide in the waterway, it's really wet right there. We got a little bit of a green hue going on since this was all grass for the past 25 years. There is a huge seed bank of grass. By a seed bank of grass, I mean when the grass grows tall and it sprouts little seeds on the top, those seeds fall down in the ground, then they grow more grass. So it just keeps getting thicker and thicker. So there's a lot of grass seed planted in this ground. We sprayed it this past spring, but some of it's just coming through right now. So once we get this back into full crop rotation here, we'll be able to battle this grass a lot better. You dust it out if you stand down wind of that. It's all wet in here. Cooper had a hydraulic line burst in there somewhere. Dr. Cornstar. Oh, I'm a chicken nuggerless child, sorry. French fried? Nope. No, no sweet potato. Who's asking? Ow, I have beads in my boot. Hurts to run. We had pizza again for lunch, so I feel really out of shape right now. I'm getting kind of tired of pizza. Our old grain carts look so small compared to the new one. I see something I should probably take care of quick. Wouldn't be too much fun to run this through something. We'll set it by this post so that way we don't forget about it. Stay. We'll come by later when we have a truck so we can put that in the back. That cart's got a few beans in it and this one's about half full, so I'm gonna dump these beans into that cart. So that way this cart's completely empty when we go down the road, then we just have to empty one cart under the semi. I'm making a parts run right now for my son, I guess. The reverser broke on our combine, so I'm gonna get parts. I was telling the boys, it seems like I've been running here, running there. I start this project and I gotta go get this, or this person calls me, this is broke. Or dad, I need this, dad, dad. Or people, hey, this is broke on the semi, or this isn't working. I said to the boys one day, I don't remember ever doing this much running around. And they said, when grandpa was alive, he did all the running. So I guess now places have changed and I'm that run around person. But sometimes on the farm, you think the people's jobs that they're doing things for you, you think, well, that's easy. But you know, when you're doing the other stuff too, it is all very important jobs. 
So we got to work together to get this stuff done. And I know during harvest and this year with the weather, it's been nerve wracking, but we'll get through her. I'm going to show you guys, the ladies and everything, something pretty cool. This kind buying here is brand spanking new. And they get really cheap after midnight. You know what I mean? Real cheap after midnight. On the road again. We positioned one of our ad cams on the back of the grain cart right here. This is really nice because if a car gets too close, like they always like to do, and you can't see them from the cab, I can see them on here. This is the Missouri Crossing that we fixed earlier this spring. So far, it's holding up really well. There's roughly 65 acres of beans over here. And then over there where it's harvested, just over this hill here, there's also another 20 acres or so. But we gotta cross the creek, so we have to take our head off, hop on the highway, then go in the driveway over there to get to that bit. With these rows being nice and long here, we can get about 25 acres an hour done. Hopefully Dad and Cooper can get the hydraulic hose for our combine so that we can get over here as well. We'll be able to take out some serious acres in an hour when we have both combines running on a good long field. When you're a grain cart guy, you just kind of sit and twiddle your thumbs, listen to the radio, look at the neighbor's crops, think about life. Sounds like Cooper is having some issues with the feeder house chain. I think they got that put on right now. So they're gonna get the head hooked back on and they're gonna start picking. Looks like Cooper's also full. We have a creek here, so I have to go way up on the highway, go around for him to dump on me. And it also looks like Presley's full. We used a 40 foot draper head here to bridge this creek so that we could get across to the other side. Well, we were getting pretty close to wrapping up that field. Then Presley decided he was gonna cross the waterway and it just so happened to be extremely wet and he sunk it all the way to the middle of the wheel. Those wheels are six feet tall, or taller, and it sunk it to the middle of the wheel. So he's in there pretty good. I ran back to grab a four wheel drive tractor to try to pull him out, and this one's hooked up to the real disc. I don't know if you can see it because it's dark, but the one that's not hooked up to anything has a dead battery. So we're gonna get that started quick, and we got a half an hour drive over there. It's 9.40 p.m. right now, then we'll get it pulled out, and hopefully we'll finish up on beans. And oh yeah, this is my cousin. He decided to come ride with me. Are you having fun? Yeah. We're all having fun. All right, let's get this started. Doesn't look very good. She's stuck. Hey, Shad, how you doing? Good, buddy. Right in the snakeweed patch. This stuff is just, it's another kind of plant. Yeah, that looks fairly buried. We're standing 
deep water under the snakeweed. I think the official name for snakeweed is like rushing scour or something like that, but it's a weird kind of plant. Like I'm standing on it right now, but it's so thick, like I'm not even touching the ground. We're gonna try pulling it out nice and easy. Just first gear, idle her down all the way, just kind of let her roll for nice and easy. What we don't want to do is rip the back axle off the combine. That's what can happen when you get stuck like this. There's so much suction in this mud. It's not what you want. It's definitely not ideal, but we're looking for the best place to hook onto it right now, and then we'll go from there. The owner of the combine is here, so that way he can approve of where they decide to put it. And then there's no pointing fingers of if something goes wrong that we hooked it in the wrong spot. These things happen, they're never fun, but they happen. try to do is back up to a little bit of an angle that way we pull one wheel out at a time I am tightening her up a little bit I don't know if we we might need to have Presley unhook me here in a sec to re-angle but let's try it quick Yeah, let's have Presley uh, re-hook me. Well, things like this happen, I tell you what, it's something you don't like. Luckily, Cooper is still able to run our combine right now. It's not all dewy yet, so at least we have one machine rolling. We should get this field done tonight. This right here is from this tractor. We've tried it from that angle, straight on, and that angle. The issue is the head is pressing against the ground and it's causing a big bind. That's the feeder house chain and it's all the way up and it's sitting right on the ground. I'll tell you what, this snakeweed's some incredible stuff. Just look at this. It's like three feet deep. Oh yeah, and there's a the stuck combine. What do you have to say about your actions? I haven't been stuck all year and it just had to be in front of the corn star. He was nervous. We're waiting on another tractor right now, that way we can be pulling with two. They're sending down a T8 New Holland. We'll get her out. I stepped in water and my foot is very wet because there's a hole in my boot. Oh! <laughs> that's, don't fall in the hole, that's my words of wisdom for today. <laughs> Socks dry. That's good. Good job, Shad. No pairs of pants in here. Got a hard hat there. Corn stars leads the hard hat. Here you go, buddy. There's the tractor. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The crazy thing, it wasn't many years ago I could outrun every one of these guys. But I can't do it anymore. We're going to see if the old New Holland can pull it out by itself. Otherwise, we're going to pull with both tractors. We're gonna try hooking up my tractor first, and then we're gonna hook the other tractor to this tractor, and then we're both gonna be pulling at the same time. There we go! We 
got her out. Those are some big old ruts. Two o'clock in the morning and we're just getting done. It's two o'clock in the morning. We just got everything wrapped up on this particular farm. We'd like to jump to another 50 acre field, but it's a half an hour drive away and we still gotta move equipment over there. And both semis are full as well as the grain cart. Both grain carts actually. So we're just gonna end up calling it a night. That means this is the end of the video. If you guys liked the video, remember to give it a big thumbs up. If you have any questions, write down in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next one, guys. Peace.